they, are, they are, I guess, are ranked top ten in both uh, punt and kick return. What, what have they done so well? Maybe what's a challenge for your group on uh, Monday night? Yeah, I'll tell you guys the same thing I told uh, the group this morning is they're, they're explosive. Um, Berrios does a really good job um, controlling the play. He's a veteran uh, return specialist, had a great career up in uh, New York. Now he's in Miami, but he, he's, he's dangerous. Every time he touches the ball, does a great job really get, getting what's there. And then so he's tough. He's, you know, he's no bigger than me, but the kid's, the kid's tough. He's hard to get down, and um, he's dangerous every time he touches the ball. Is Jaquan hitting the hole as well as you'd like him to? It seems like that there's been a couple of times where maybe he could have come in a different direction and gotten more yards. Yeah, Jaquan's done a great job for us. He, he's he's continuing to get better. Um, from even from week one to last week, he's he's starting to see the big picture and, and seeing, um, you know, what's there. And he's going to continue to get better. And um, we have the utmost confidence in him. And we're fired up to have him. Brian said the plan is to sign Luke at some point before the game uh, on Monday. What what has Luke meant to your? group uh, through the first few weeks that makes him a key part that you guys are wanting to sign into the active roster. Who's that? Gifford. Oh, Luke. I thought you yeah. said Duke. I'm hard hearing. No, we're fired up to have Luke. Uh, there's a reason we, we, we kept him here. Um, he, he's, you know, I think two years ago, he was one of the top guys in the NFL as far as, you know, tackle production. Um, you know, we, we, we need Luke. He, he's a good special teams player for us, and we, we count on him. So to have him on the act is, is big for us, and um, he, he's the leader. He's the leader of that group, and uh, we rely on him to do that. What's the conversation with Jeff about what happened on that play? Yeah, the conversation is you, you can't do that. Um, you know, Jeff's made a lot of plays in this league uh, on defense and on, on field goal block, and, uh, you know, something we don't coach. And, and, you know, we had a conversation with Jeff, and he's just trying to make a play at that situ in, that, in that situation in that game. And, um, you know, so we had a conversation, and, and uh, you know, we corrected it. Nick, with this offense, there's so many new starters. Is that, and, and there's a lot of youth as well uh, at some key spots. How much is that maybe affecting pulling things together offensively? Absolutely, it's affecting it. You're look around, you kind of go through the games, and you're like, man, we're playing really well at times. And then it's one thing here that's come up, one thing here that comes up. And it's kind of, especially with young players that haven't seen it before, you're like, oh, all right, well, we've hit that once. We've hit this two or three times this week, but maybe it didn't sink in. Or maybe, boy, we didn't explain it well enough. So I think especially as a coaching staff and as players, we're all kind of learning together, I would say, which has been good. And, I mean, good and bad, right? You wish you'd be... Uh, learning more after wins and successful plays and hey if they do this the next time be ready for this but we're kind of all in that realm together it feels like with, with your scoring drives it seems like a lot of those are coming like early with the scripts that, that you're you're putting together is there something you could do better to pull that to post script and, and and those types of opportunities yeah we kind of talk about that all the time like i think the openers have been good for us you know chicago they weren't great but the last couple of weeks when We've kind of stayed on script and stayed on schedule, but it's more been about avoiding negative plays, and then you can kind of get to the more balanced stuff rather than totally the script of it. But I do think the scripted stuff helps. You know, we've talked about you getting that balance of do you want to save some things for the second half of a second half opener script and kind of do things. So we talk about all kind of those things, but really we think that just staying on schedule and not having any negative plays or getting behind the sticks on first and second down will really keep us efficient. What are some Brian of your thoughts on going tempo on offense, get that urgency going? I think it'd be, or we think it'd be great. You know, there's some of those things that, but it has its pluses and minuses, right? Sometimes you go fast and you go really fast three and out and all of a sudden you're off the field in 30 seconds, your defense is right back up. So I think it's a feel of the game and kind of what advantage does it give you that week? So I think there's some weeks it's better than others. And, you know, we've done it a little bit, but uh, it certainly could be something we expand in the future if the situation arises. Brian talked about uh, maybe scheming to try and help the right tackle situation mm -hmm. and, you know, not put those guys in such mm -hmm. stressful situations, whether it's Nick or Jalen. How, what, in what areas, though, does that kind of take away from other things that you can do on offense if you're having to put additional resources at right tackle? It just really affects the spacing in the passing game, right? So if you're leaving somebody in, you're leaving a back in, you're leaving a tight end in, that way you're really sacrificing whether it's a check down or holding a second or you know first level player to then throw it behind him or something like that. So that's really where the issue comes in is you feel like, okay, we're really, you're playing with almost six linemen, it feels like at times when you chip all the time and you have to do those things. But 
also it's a necessary evil too, right? It's you could say, oh, we want to get everybody out, and then you're sacked. So there's a balance, I think, for us. We you know don't want to chip and help every play, but we want to chip and help enough and give those guys a chance. And especially when you drop back, you know, we got in got behind in that game, so it really became a drop back game for us, and that just kind of exposes your issues more. I had said last week that LaFleur was a great coach to steal from. Mm -hmm. I imagine McDaniel was a great coach to steal from as well. How much uh, is, is what you guys do stealing uh, in, a, in a nice way? We're all thieves. We, uh, you know, you see one thing on tape and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then, oh, they motion this guy and you're like, oh, we want to steal that too. So we're all thieves and especially that, you know, McVeigh, Shanahan, Tree, they're so creative formationally and motion wise and kind of set things up that I've probably more has been stolen from those guys than uh, anybody else in the league in the last probably four or five years. So yeah, you, and sometimes it's even, we're on the scout team. We're watching our scout team. And you know, like even last week at the Packers, we're like, oh, that was a cool play. You know, because I don't watch the, uh, you know, our, the Packers offense as much or vice versa, you know, when they're going against the defense. And so you go, oh, that's a cool play. We should put that in or, hey, add that motion to some of our plays. So, yeah, we're stealing all the time. You see periodically, I, I don't know, maybe when you're watching a Thursday night game in the background or something, your own stuff stolen and feel honored? Yeah, you feel honored. Yes, absolutely you feel honored. You're like, oh, all right, we're doing something right. You know, if somebody's taking one of your plays or something that, you know, I don't know how many original plays there really are anymore. We're all kind of copying some version of somebody else. But when you see something that you've done that works and then somebody else tries to take it, you're like, all right, at least we're we're putting something good out there that somebody else is watching. How does that process work for you guys as far as like stealing plays? Like I've seen in, in other stats where they have one assigned to trick plays, another assigned to this and that. How do you guys do it? It's a little bit of that. So each coach on our staff is kind of the head coach of a section. So whether it's the red zone, third down, short yardage. And those guys really watch everything around the league. And then they'll bring stuff to you know, myself, Brian, Bill. And they're like, hey, here's some cool things that, you know, whoever's doing that the Giants are doing, the Packers are doing, whoever it is. And they're like, so then you kind of see that or, hey, they're using this new formation. And hey, would this work for us with our personnel? And it kind of just kind of stirs up new thoughts. So it's been fun. What are you in charge of? I, they make me in charge of all of it, which is a problem, you know. Get Hopkins involved uh, more on Sunday, and how much of that was him kind of being the first read or, or kind of the primary? I think it's it was great to get him going, right? It was great to see him in space and kind of, you know, he made the great play on the contested catch, which is what he's done, you know, for the touchdown when uh, we threw him the fade ball. Like, that's what he's done his whole career. So to see him, you know, kind of get to do what he does best was great enough for us to hit him. And, you know, you guys have been at practice and seen us missing some of those kind of deep shots down the field and to throw it to a guy who goes and makes a play, it was awesome. So part of it was that and part of it was the flow of the game where we ended up being able to get some play action shots and some things like that with him in. And so it was a little bit of flow of the game where we were able to get those plays called and then that the coverage was right for him to get it. So probably a mix of everything. But it was great to get him going and we hope to keep building on it. Playing less than half the snaps. What's an, what's an, I'm assuming that's due to him still coming back health wise. Mm -hmm. What's an ideal amount that you'd like to see a healthy DeAndre Hopkins on the field? I think it depends, right? So if, you know, if you're in a four minute game, and if we're going to be in a 13 personnel game or a, something like that, it's his all those receiver snaps are going to be less, and the tight ends are going to go up. So it's a little bit of a game plan flow. But I think if you get him over 50 and really kind of in the flow of all the you know, third downs, red zones, all those kind of crucial situations. We'd love to keep building on those, but he's just keep going. Somebody, sorry, I don't mean to cut oh, you yeah. off. Do you oh, see yeah. him as somebody that can or should be leading your wide receiver group in terms of how much he's on the field? Or is at his point in his career somebody that you're wanting to tempo pace a little bit? It's game to game, I would say. You know, he's played 12 years, you know, so he's got, I think, to ask him for especially not having a training camp and things like that. To, But he's getting, you know, he's in shape. I'm not saying he's not in shape, but it just keeps keep, – getting better and better. And so we'll just kind of keep, we want it to keep growing. I'm not sure we have an exact number of what we want it to be, but he's uh, certainly going to keep being a focal point. A guy like Calvin is used to getting eight to 10 targets a game and he only gets three like he did on Sunday. Yeah. How much self scouting do you have to go back and do to say, to see why he was taken away? So, well, there's ones he was taken away and there's other ones where we're going to him and the ball didn't come out in time, right? So are some of them, some of the self-scout is, are we trying to get him too far down the field? You know what I mean? Are, there, are they all shots? Are they all things? Are there 
some more quick game things to get him involved where the protection isn't as vital. So it was a balance. You know, I think Jair was a really good player. And then, you know, we threw the pick six. And so I think sometimes when it was pick one or the other, I think sometimes we're like, well, you know, it was, all right, I don't want to go there. I'm going to go to the other guy. And so you kind of see Hopkins' numbers go up too. So it's a mix of everything. But you certainly we go and look and see, you know, we get a report every Monday of what positions he's in and where he gets targeted. And so we try to balance that out and every week. But we don't think they have a great beat on where he is because we've moved him around enough. But uh, it's always something we're looking at. Nick, last year we saw two – touchdowns from tight ends on this team all year. And you guys have already matched that with a couple. So how do you think this offense maybe showcases the tight ends a bit more as playmakers? So? I, they've done a nice job. You know, those guys have done a nice job all through camp. And it's kind of, you know, Chig had the great play. And Will's got a lot of trust of them. So, you know, the play in Chicago in the end zone, you know, those guys are in the right spots. And so they have all have kind of banked reps with Will. They've gotten a lot of time. So uh, we don't really kind of try to, we're progression-based offense, right? So we start one place and kind of go the, you know, go, and they're always in the right spot. So I think that part for them has been really good. That they're just so reliable, and we want to keep growing with them. So they want to keep getting more and more, and kind of every time the ball has found them, it's been productive. So you know, whether it's Josh or Chig or Nick, and if we ever get the other two up, I think we'd all feel we feel really good about them. But um, I don't know, you know, really how it was in the past with those targets, but for us, they're just as valuable as everybody else. Traylon Burks, mm -hmm. I know you guys want him out there because he stretches the field, but at what point, because there's some missed opportunities, you know, making plays on the ball. Like at what point does it become like, okay? Yeah, you, you know, it, we, you know, we want Traylon to play, right? We want him to go out there and make plays. And I think at some point, right, if you keep getting targets and things don't go your way, you know, sometimes it's been a little bit bad luck and some of the targets, you know, maybe – he gets, you know, doubled or we wanted the ball to go somewhere else or their protection, put it where he got it. So it's a balancing for everything. We have faith in Traylon. We have faith in Nick. And, you know, we both think those guys uh, are really valuable pieces of our offense. I know you can only go off tape, but the will you see watching him against the Dolphins last year, mm -hmm. what do you want to see more of now that he was able to do to kind of succeed there? I don't know. I mean, you would, it was, you know, a two score game in the fourth quarter with a pretty crazy comeback. So there's part of that of we've seen that guy, you know what I mean? Uh, um, where he's really on target and things like that. We just want Will to play within the scheme, under control, and just take completions. You know what I mean? Manage the game. And really, we do feel like Will's playing pretty well, other than a couple of the disaster plays, you know? And if you take those out, you're like, oh, that'd be great. But everybody wishes they could, hey, if I got, you know, didn't get judged on my worst performance, my worst play. I'd be pretty awesome at everything, too. So, you know, it's all part of it. Um, you know, you see the competitor, and I think that same guy, and, you, you know, you saw kind of the passion and the, the aggressiveness he was at the end of that game when he, you know, he threw the ball to Tajay down the right sideline. He had D-hop on the um, deep cross in the game last year. And, you know, those are throws we've seen him hit this year as well. So it's not like it's that different. But, you know, as long as he just keeps managing – or manages the game and keeps kind of growing in that role, I think we'll all see the guy that, you know, has that success. Not many, right. teams, not many teams are able to win when you rush for 30, 40 yards in a game. What's being done to try and get the run game back on track this week? Yeah, the, part of the reason the run game kind of went away was two reasons. One, they were doing all kinds of stunts and fronts and kind of on first and second down, really on first down. So that kind of got us out of it. And then being behind, you know, 16 the whole time, it kind of became a throw game. And we felt like they were giving us the throws. So, uh, you know, obviously one thing would be to call it more, right, which we want to be more balanced. That's always our goal. And then uh, really kind of be able to stay in front or stay at least in close contact score-wise. We just got down so far the run game kind of dried up. And we still should probably – looking back, we should probably should have called a few more runs as – the game went on, but we still have faith in the run game, and I think it'll just kind of take care of itself, hopefully, by its situation. With right tackle, Brian said, you know, kind of up in the air, got to see the week of practice, and maybe both guys even play. How do you go about the week of practice in terms of who's getting those reps with the, that starting group to start, and what do you want to see from them? Yeah, well, they both have also been getting reps leading up to this. So, you know, it hasn't been Nick taking all the reps anyways. You know, those guys always roll. Um, but really the big day is tom tomorrow we'll be in full pads kind of everybody's, you know, can block in a 
with no pads on and kind of, ah, I would have had them and those kind of things, see the hand placement things. But other, it's hard to evaluate that. So tomorrow will be a big day and they'll get a bunch of live-ish situations and the guy that plays the best will kind of take the job. And, um, you know, we, you know, Nick, I know he wants some plays back and JD does too. And so they just got to kind of keep growing and that's, uh, that's what we got. Is that one or both of those guys take a jump and improve? But if you don't see that as the bye week, maybe a spot where you guys consider mixing things around or looking externally? Uh, that's an upper management decision that I can't uh, totally get to. You know, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say you know that what our long-term roster plans are. But yeah, I think everything's always on the table. Uh, but we feel really good. We do feel good about those guys, and we think they'll take the jump. So. Uh, another week where you probably aren't quite sure of who your starting quarterback you're facing. Uh, do you, how, especially with Huntley, uh, how do you prepare for him and what he might look like in this offense if he's the one starting on Monday night? Yeah, we got to prepare for, um, you know, for for Snoop. I, I know him extremely well, being around in Baltimore. Um, he brings a different element. Uh, you know, he can run the ball. Right, they can run some of the option stuff and things of like that. The zone read so. You know, we got to be prepared both ways. He gets the ball out of his hands quick. So we, we know that as well. And in this offense, really, it's all about timing. And they do an excellent job of spacing the field and getting the ball out. And he does that well. What did, did LaFleur and the Packers do so well with Malik that maybe caught you off guard against a guy that you guys know really well? Well, they did, a, they did an excellent job in the run game. You know, I think that, you know, this was the first week you know, of the games we had this season where we didn't tackle well. And a lot of the plays that they had, they had yak yards off of missed tackles. And if, if we tackle, we tackle in space, you know, we were in situations in third down where we could have got off the field. But, you know, he used the whole field. They ran their offense in terms of their run game. They ran their offense very well. We just got to be better at what we do and control the things that we do and, and, and play better and play to our standard. Did you, did you end up counting missed tackles or how many it was? We had 15 missed tackles for 118 yards, which is very uncharacteristic of our defense. How do you fix that in C? Like, you got padded practice, obviously, once a week. But well, you, you just got to stress it. You know, you got to stress it. And it, it starts in individual. You know, it's the way you fit when the pads are on or even when the pads are off, you know, doing practice. Like today, guys have to run to the ball and get position, lower their center of gravity, squeeze to the near hip and, you know, simulate and finish on the ball. So you just have to be conscious about it. You have to be aware. You have to press the issue and, and, and it happened. I mean, it was for, for us, even preseason to that point, you know, we were, we were doing a great job of tackling. How do you know about simulating Miami's speed? Is there a way to do that? <clears throat> it's really hard to do that. I mean, you know, Tyreek and Waddle, they can really run, you know. So it's hard to simulate it, um, but we'll do our best. Our show team, our scout team guys do an excellent job of imitating the receivers that, that they have, um, you know, each week. But it's, uh, it's about us looking at the right things and being in the right spot when we're supposed to. How do you assess Jeff's play to this point? I think Jeff's been playing excellent. Um, as you can see, you know, teams don't run the ball up the middle on us. Um, and then, like I said last week, you know, they slide to him a lot. But he's, he's been doing an excellent job. He's controlling and neutralizing the line of scrimmage along with Sweat. And um, he continues to just be one of our better players. I'm curious, though, because you know you see a lot of players in this league, whether it's Chris Jones, whoever, like, it, it slides to them. Yeah. But they still manage to produce. Well, so. it's, it's, it's also about us on first and second down um, stopping the run and allowing him to get off. And then, you know, we've been playing teams where – when we stop the run or we create negative plays on first down, they don't allow us to rush because they, they screen. You know, they get the ball out quick. And it's just been, it's, it's been one of those things right now. But he's working diligently. Everybody else is. And, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll make the plays. It's still a long season. It's early. You know, we're still figuring it out. All right, but we got to figure out fast. And, you know, Jeff, I have no worries about Jeff. He's one of our best players. And he'll continue to be one of our best players. Ready? Do you feel like Jarvis is for the challenge? Monday Night Football, great receiving core, and a start for the first time in his career. Well, I don't know if he's going to start this week. We'll 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 see that. You know, we'll see when it comes out. But um, you know, last week was a great learning lesson for Jarvis. You know, Jarvis left some plays out there on the table, and um, he knows it. And internally, he's a tough guy. He wants to do right, 
And it's a great opportunity to go out there this week and fix the problems that he had last week. And he's very conscious of it. So he's going to work hard. And if he gets the opportunity to play, I expect him to play well. At least on the stat sheet, it seems like Arden has been a guy that hasn't made a lot of impact. What's been your assessment of him? I think Arden has done a hell of a job. And when you see him, you know, sometimes it's not the stats, but the way he plays, how violent he plays, I think he's done a great job. He, it's, an, it's, another, it's another thing where once, it, once we get hot, he'll get hot. Um, you know, a lot of times he's been right there by the quarterback and the ball has come out. So, you know, we got to do a better job in rushing coverage, staying connected body to body, and make these quarterbacks hesitate so he can get there. You said once, once we get hot, he'll get hot. Aren't some of these guys responsible for getting you hot? Well, they are, and they're doing, they're doing the best they can. But like I say, in cer certain situations, the ball's coming out fast, a lot of screens here and there. Um, you know, these guys have been product productive over the years, and they're still going to produce. And this week is just another opportunity for, for them to go out there and do their job and do their job to the best of their ability. You look at some of the third downs the mm -hmm. Packers were failing. I mean, it's third and 14, third and 18, mm -hmm. they're converting. You know, how frustrating is that? And what can you do to correct you know, one of the couple calls I wish I had back um, in terms of what we presented and what we played. Um, so in, in, in other opportunities, I could have went and got them and pressured them. Um, but it is frustrating when you give up a third and long and you put them in that position. Um, we got to execute better as a whole. I got to call it better as a whole. And when we get those opportunities, you know, we got to maximize and, 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 and make the best of those opportunities in third and long. What's your process of balancing reps and certain looks for the three safeties with Diggs, Jamal, and Amani? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, you try to get them all on the field because you know they all can produce. Um, you know, Jamal is playing really two spots, um, you know, and he's a good player, so we have to get him on the field. And I'm just trying to find a rhythm with those guys. You know, I'm very comfortable with all three of them playing. Uh, Quandre played an excellent game last week. Um, and, and so did Amani. Amani's getting better and better each week. And, and Jamal came in and, and made some plays. So it's all, it's all about just finding the rhythm of, of them playing and who has the hot hand. Whoever has the hot hand, they'll keep playing. Yesterday, Jeff told me that he thinks if it's Snoop Connor, or Snoop, excuse me, Snoop, um, I'm on his name. Snoop. Huntley, Huntley thank Huntley. you. God. <laughs> Snoop that you see this week. Uh, he wouldn't be surprised if it, you face a, a pretty similar offensive yeah. game plan. And he felt like last week the plan was sound, but the execution was where you guys fell short. As the person who put together the plan, if you do see a similar offensive attack, um, do you think you'll, you'll take a, a similar approach and just emphasize execution, or would you approach it differently? Yeah, I think it's all about execution and eyes and tackling. You know, when you look at it, shedding blocks, tackling, you know, they're going to have different wrinkles. They're going to window dress certain things. We'll have different wrinkles for the game. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to tell you our strategy on how we're going to try to defend these guys. Uh, you got to understand it's the, really it's in the core, it's the same conceptual offense. They just do it a little bit different. And the two head coaches that we faced last week and the one this week, they worked together for a long time. So it's about us correcting the mistakes that we had because in this league, when you make mistakes, they show back up. And we got to correct those. We got to tackle better. Uh, we got to play better. We got to play as one. And if we do what, we do what we've been doing on the first two weeks, we'll be in position all right, to make plays. You mentioned wrinkles. McDaniel, known for his wrinkles and creativity. Um, how hard is that to game plan against? And then also, how does bringing in a quarterback that isn't exactly a veteran within the system with him, how does that affect things? Yeah, uh, Mike does a great job, but as a defense, defense is all about playing by your rules. So if you have set rules on all the window dressing and what they're doing, if you play by your rules and you look at the same, the right stuff, it puts you in a position to make plays. For us, I think in the last game, we wanted to come out and the guys wanted to be aggressive. And I think early in the game, they used the aggressiveness against us. All right, and about the, our eyes and running to the ball. So we just have to be aware about it, be where we're supposed to be, look at the right things, and we have the men for the job to execute and play well. What are your thoughts on oh, well, just the way the league is trending towards so much too high to take away the, the deep routes and, and those types of things? Well, if you, if you have a defense that can stop the run with a light box, it, it, mean, it, it gives you the best of both worlds. 
because now you eliminate the explosive plays. Um, what, what really gets you in this game is the explosive plays, right, and, and, and the hidden yardage. So if you can stop the run with a light box and still be able to have overlap on the deep play-action passing game, you're good. Now, if you can't stop the run with a light box, you got to load it up. And when you load it up, they have one-on-ones, and that's where they create their shots. So it's a game. It's a chess, it's a chess match. You know, at times you got to go load it. Sometimes you have to play split safety, and um, you know we got to be, be we got to be good at both. This week you're facing a team that could obviously stretch the field mm -hmm. vertically, but you know they could hit the hit the edges mm -hmm. with their speed mm -hmm. uh, running the ball. How, how much more stress is that put on? You know, that's too high look. And it puts like a lot that. of stress on the defense in general. Um, but like I said, it's about executing. Um, they can run vertical, but we got a couple uh, cornerbacks that can run vertical as well. And um, it's going to be a great matchup. I can't wait to see Legereus go out there and compete to the best of his ability and, and, and match up and cover. And, uh, you know, we're just waiting for Monday to see the uh, outcome. It's much more of an offensive idea, the idea of stealing plays that Brian and Nick have talked about. But how often do you kind of see a wrinkle from somebody else that you steal or borrow? Yeah, you're always watching film. You know, you, when you do, when you watching your opponent, Sometimes you're looking at teams that have similar uh, styles of play or certain things conceptually that you could do. And sometimes you say, oh, this is a great idea. This is good versus this protection. This is good to stop the run. Uh, how, how can we put it in our language, in our defense to execute it? And then sometimes you, you have to say, is it too much? Does it go away from your core uh, beliefs and what you do as a whole? So. You know, you can look at it and, and take certain things and put your spin on it. Uh, but I think everybody does that. I mean, you don't – like football's been around for a long time. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of things that you see now and they did back back when. You know, it's, 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 it's 11 guys out there versus one ball at the end of the day. Is your tone or messaging or even demeanor different – following a week when you didn't execute well, as well as, as this you is, liked? This has been my message. And the way we played, I told them it was a bunch of paper cuts. And what I said in terms of paper cuts, it was those nagging little cuts that we had when one guy didn't do his responsibility, where we didn't tackle, they added up. And it's about, it's about right now bandaging those wounds. And how do you bandage those wounds? You fix the mistakes that you, that you had, all right? You correct it, you do all the little things right in practice, and you move on.